Hey guys and girls, in this video we're going to take a look at the best compact cameras. I made this list based on my personal opinion and tons of research, and have listed them based on quality, durability, price, and more. I've included options for every type of consumer, so if you're looking for an entry-level option or the best products money can buy, we'll have the products for you in this list. If you want more information and updated pricing on the products mentioned, be sure to check the links in the description down below. Also, if you want a chance to win one of the compact cameras in the video, just subscribe and leave a comment with the hidden word in the video. OK, so without further ado, this is our pick of the best compact cameras on the market right now. Coming at number 10, we've got the Ricoh GR3. The Ricoh GR has a long history, both as a premium quality compact 35mm film camera and now as a digital model. However, its specs and its performance are now looking a little behind the curve compared to its latest rivals. GR fans, or GRists as Ricoh calls them, will love this update of an iconic camera. This is a beautiful sized APS-C compact, ideal for carrying around in the pocket and for discreet street photography. But this is sold at a luxury price that is no longer justified by the build quality or the feature set. Number 9. Fujifilm XF10 the Fujifilm XF10 is less than half the price of the X100F, but it's definitely more than half the camera. You don't get Fujifilm's fancy hybrid optical electronic viewfinder here, so all your shots have to be composed on the fixed rear screen. But you do get a top quality 24.2 megapixel sensor, a very good 28mm f2.8 fixed focal length lens, and a very attractively designed little camera. In fact, this camera is so slim you can easily slide it into a jacket's pocket, and it's this, as well as the relatively low price, that makes it so appealing for quality-conscious photographers who don't want to spend too much money. Coming in at number 8, Fujifilm X100F. A retro design, unique hybrid viewfinder, and large, for a compact, APS-C sensor made the original Fujifilm FinePix X100 one of the most desirable fixed-lens digital cameras at the time of its 2011 release. The first X camera was superseded by the X100S and the X100T, each of which fine-tuned the formula. But it's the fourth iteration, the Fujifilm X100F, where everything has come together beautifully. A new control layout, a third-generation 24.3-megapixel X-Trans CMOS 3 sensor with no low-pass filter, an expanded sensitivity range and improved AF may appear more evolution than revolution, but it's the combination of these refinements that deliver a step change in performance. The aforementioned sensor, fixed 35mm equivalent f2 lens, X Processor Pro Engine and Film Simulation modes combine to deliver super images, and taking them brings just as much pleasure. Make no mistake, it's not cheap, but the X100F is a magnificent compact camera for photography enthusiasts. Coming at number 7, Leica Q2. Leica cameras tend to divide opinions quite strongly. They are fearsomely expensive, built to traditional designs, and standards that many consider dated or irrelevant, and rarely match modern rivals for features and technologies. But there's more to cameras than numbers on a spreadsheet, and everything about the Leica Q2 is superb, from its full-frame image quality with its new 47-megapixel sensor through to its Leica-made Summilux lens and its stripped-down minimalist design. Using a Leica isn't just about the images, it's about the experience too, so you just need to decide if the experience is worth all this money. Number 6. Sony Cybershot RX100 III Sony has a strategy of keeping older versions of its cameras on sale for a long time, with prices that keep on going down. So although the RX100 III is four versions behind the brand new RX107, its specs are still pretty good even by today's standards. It's the first RX100 model to get a built-in pop-up electronic viewfinder, its flip-up and over rear screen is ideal for selfies and vlogging, and while its lens has a shorter 24-70mm to equivalent zoom range than the newer camera, it has a faster f1.8-2.8 to maximum aperture across that range. If you don't need the RX107's high-powered AF pro-level 4K video features and super-fast continuous shooting, the RX103 is ideal. It has the small form factor of the RX100 series and the same good quality 1-inch sensor, but without any of the muscle-bound madness of the later models. Coming in at number 5, Sony Cybershot RX107. The Sony Cybershot RX107 is mad on any number of levels. 
The plus points include its impressive 24 to 200 mm zoom range in such a small camera, its pop-up electronic viewfinder in a camera that looks too small to have one, and its good-sized 1-inch 20.1 megapixel sensor. It can also shoot 4K video, which is good, but then it all starts to get quite strange. This camera has a super high-tech 357-point phase detection autofocus system, a 20fps continuous shooting speed, up to 90fps in single burst mode, and 0.02 sec AF response with real-time AF tracking. It also has Sony's S-Log2 and S-Log3 video modes for high-end video recording and color grading, all in a pocket-sized camera. All this power is great and deeply impressive, but it pushes up the price considerably and to some might seem out of place on a camera like this. Coming at number 4, the Panasonic Lumix LX15 LX10. The Panasonic LX15, which goes by the name LX10 in some territories, doesn't have a viewfinder. And it also has a 1-inch 20-megapixel sensor rather than the larger Micro Four Thirds sensor in the LX100 too. The smaller sensor and lack of a built-in EVF might put some people off, and the smooth finish to the body doesn't make for the firmest hand grip. But the responsive touchscreen is terrific, the dual control rings provide a very pleasing user experience, and the 24-72mm has one of the widest aperture settings around, courtesy of its f1.4 to f2.8 aperture range. Overall, this neat little snapper has the perfect balance of features, performance, and pricing. It's small enough for your pocket, but powerful enough for some serious photography. Number 3. Panasonic Lumix LX100 II The trouble with big sensors is that you need big lenses to go with them, so there goes any kind of pocketability. Usually. But Panasonic has really hit the sweet spot with the Panasonic LX100 II. It combines a micro four-thirds sensor that's not much smaller than the ASPC sensors in mode DSLRs with a miniaturized lens assembly that powers down into a camera body slim enough to carry around anywhere. The LX100 II is a brand new version of the original LX100, which was, admittedly, starting to show its age. The new model has a 16-megapixel multi-aspect sensor, which means you can use its native 4-3 aspect ratio, the 3-2 ratio used by most DSLRs and mirrorless models, or a 16-9 wide format without cropping the image or losing pixels. With an external shutter speed dial, lens aperture ring, and aspect ratio switch, the LX100 II is a dream compact camera for enthusiasts and experts. Coming at number 2, Canon PowerShot G5X Mark II. The Canon G1X Mark III is a great camera but it has some limitations. Notably, it's 3 times zoom with its relatively modest maximum aperture and no 4K video. The G5X Mark II offers a much broader range of specs, and it's also a little cheaper. You don't have to accept a smaller sensor, a still decent 1-inch 20-megapixel sensor rather than the 24-megapixel APS-C sensor in the G1X Mark II, but the payback is a longer 5 times zoom with a much faster f1.8 to 2.8 maximum aperture, 4K video, a super-fast burst mode, and a body genuinely small enough to slip into a trouser pocket. If you really want a bigger sensor, you should choose one of the previous compact cameras. But the G5X Mark II does give you a very rounded set of specs for a pocket camera. Number 1. Canon PowerShot G1X Mark III Canon really has done an amazing job with the G1X Mark III. Yes, it is pretty pricey for a compact camera, but it houses pretty much the same 24-megapixel APS-C sensor in its slimline body as you'll find in Canon's EOS 80D DSLR and its EOS M mirrorless cameras. This is matched up to a zoom lens that's even more amazing, because it covers a 24-72 to 72 equivalent focal range and can still retract into the camera body when you're not taking pictures. It's true that the maximum aperture does drop off considerably as you zoom in, from f2.8 right down to f5.6, but you get this with compact DSLR and mirrorless kit lenses anyway. The G1X Mark is pretty pricey, but right now it's pretty much in a class of its own for a premium compact camera with zoom. That brings us to the end of our review and buyer's guide for the best compact cameras. Hope to see you in the next video. Let us know in the comments what is your favorite one. And if you liked this content, don't forget to subscribe and get notified when we launch new videos. Thanks for watching. Peace.